This week's Farm Basics is brought to you by SatShot.com. Satellites aren't just for NASA anymore. Use the power of satellite imagery to create variable rate management zones in your fields. To reduce input costs and increase yields on your farm, go to SatShot.com. Our Farm Basics topic today is lime. We've gotten a lot of first-hand experience with lime mainly because our soil pHs were quite low I thought you were in a gonna, lot of our ground. Yeah, I thought you were going to say we've had a lot of experience with lime because when you turn on the faucet around here, the water is so hard that eventually you get all these lime deposits building up. Well, it's too bad we can't put those <laughs> to practical use, but kind of in a way we, we have when you start thinking about water treatment plants and one of the byproducts at municipal water treatment plants is actually lime which is calcium carbonate. Well, this lime, and the reason why farmers want it is really twofold. Number one, it will help to raise a low soil pH. In other words, the ideal soil pH is right around neutral at about seven. 6.8 is what we call the ideal soil pH. The problem is there are a lot of soil pHs that are 5.5, maybe six, something like that. And it could even be a lot less. But the point is when you put lime out there, it raises the soil pH. The other thing, and the other reason why a lot of people would put lime out is to get better calcium availability because plants need lots of calcium. Well, fortunately, in those cases, lime is calcium carbonate. So you're adding a lot more calcium to the equation. And when you start talking about these pHs, you're saying, well, if you may have a 5.5, you want to be up at a 6.5. Doesn't sound like that's a whole lot of difference, does it? No, it doesn't sound like it's a lot of difference, but in many cases, it's 25% off a of corn or soybean yield. And it's even more than that off an alfalfa yield. It's quite a bit off a of wheat yield. In other words, Everything else may be exactly the same. The amount of nutrients in the soil, the variety is the same, you till it the same, you do everything exactly the same. But if you've got a 6.5 pH versus a 5.5 pH, you will have a lower yield over here where you have that lower pH. Okay, let's talk to the non-farmer just a little bit. And you say, well, wait a minute. Okay, there might be some differences from one field to the next. Do you see these differences even in small areas where you have this wider range? Yep, you really can. For example, on some ground that I own, an 80 acre field, that I bought a few years ago. In that same 80 acre field, I had pHs as low as the low fives and as high as the mid eights. So it was from one end of the spectrum to the other. So that's why it's important to put the lime where it needs to go in that low pH ground. You have to identify that and properly identify that as a farmer. Well, for farmers, this is a really big deal. And you think, well, wait a minute, if it's such a big deal, how much money does it cost? Is lime really expensive? Why, aren't, why isn't everybody doing it? Yeah, well, I, I think just a lot of people don't realize how much of an impact there, there truly is with this lime and how important it is to get the soil pH up. Lime isn't that expensive, but it just depends on the source that you're getting. For us, we can get it out of the water treatment plants because it's pretty good quality lime. And we always want to test lime coming out of the water treatment plants for heavy metals or any other harmful things. But as long as those things are low or not in there at all, it's great. And so we'll put it out on our soil and it ends up increasing that yield pretty significantly. The problem is you can't run it through a normal fertilizer spreader. So if you want to run it through a normal fertilizer spreader, you have to get the dry pelletized lime, which definitely costs quite a bit more money. Well, regardless of if you use a, a bulk quantity, a fine material, or if you use a pelletized lime, it can definitely increase the pH in your soil, which will help lead to better crop production if you're suffering from acid soils. Yep. Now, one last thing we should talk about specifically how does it happen? Why, when you put lime out there, does the soil pH go up? Well, when you've got calcium carbonate, it's kind of a uh, complicated chemical equation, so hopefully we have a great, a fantastic graphic to <laughs> illustrate this because my talking through it isn't gonna do a great job. With calcium carbonate, you have calcium, which is Ca, and you have carbonate, which is carbon and three oxygen. So you have CaCO3. I thought you were gonna say carbon and eight. <laughs> well, well, anyway, with this, with this, this calcium, is high tech here, yeah, man. it really is. With, okay, but here's the point: low soil pH is that way because it has excess hydrogen. When you put that calcium carbonate out there, what the result is, the net result of putting that calcium carbonate out there, is you end up with water, you end up with CO2, which is a good thing for plants for crops, and then you end up with straight calcium, which the plant really needs. So there are a lot of good things that come out of this. There's nothing harmful, nothing bad. It's a good thing all the way around and it leads to more crop production when you apply lime on a low pH soil. Well, all three of the results of that equation are things that plants absolutely need in order to grow. And one thing plants need to get rid of if they want to grow very well is weeds, like our Weed of the Week. 
and you identified this week's weed, 